Okay, Scott, it's yours. Okay, uh, good evening. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, I, I hate to read the titles, but just for official for the recording, uh, this is the Lake Country Drive Water and Sewer Improvements Community Design Meeting. And of course, that means that we are still in the design stage. We have reached 90%. However, we still have so, a few items that we need to complete before we uh, start advertising this project. So let me get started with uh, the direction we're going. Um, and, uh, Agenda, we'll do introductions here in a moment. Uh, we're gonna do a project overview. We're gonna show you the project area. Uh, we'll go through some frequently asked questions that we get uh, at these meetings, and then we'll discuss a little bit about the timeline. So to introduce myself, my name is Scott Taylor. I am the project manager for the City of Fort Worth uh, project. Uh, my The engineering design consultant is Paul Dossett, who is uh, on the uh, call with us, and Paul is very familiar with this project by now. Uh, he should be. Um, so why are we doing this improvement project? And I think that's a very good place to start this type of thing. So the city tends to prioritize its replacing of water and sewer lines that have a high risk of failure. Now, a lot of times risk of failure is not just based on, hey, we had a water main break there, but it's determined based on a lot of other data uh, and water main break history is number one and then leak history. Then we also uh, have uh, closed circuit TV inspection, particularly on our sanitary sewer lines. Uh, and that's where we get a lot of information there. Age of the line is very critical, line material. If there's lead services, we have not come across any lead services on that we have had identified on this project. And then cast iron lines are another uh, area that we also look at uh, uh, replacing. So why are we doing the improvements now? Well, the majority of these water mains and sewer mains were uh, installed back in the 1970s. So as you can guess, we're approaching 50 plus years life on the water and on the sewer. We also, and one of the other reasons we're doing this is we're upsizing the sanitary sewer line from, it's a six inch now, or a predominantly six inch, and we're going to go with an eight inch diameter sewer line. We have a couple other areas where we'll have some larger diameter lines, uh, but those are closer to the lift station that's on Lake Country Drive. So give you an idea of the project scope. And basically uh, here's the, this kind of a map that shows uh, everything that's in black is where we're either replacing water and sewer, water only, and I don't think we're doing any sewer only. And so you can see we have a few cul-de-sacs on this project that we're gonna be doing that. So basically defining it is Sky Lake Drive and Eagle Mountain Lake to the west, Dozier Creek and Boat Club Road to the north, uh, Lake Country Christian School to the east, and then the go and golf course drive to the south. Uh, and I was just out there yesterday, by the way, driving this project again. Uh, so our project area again is the Lake Country, continuing that Lake Country Drive from Golf Club Drive to Trail Ridge Drive, and in that area we are replacing water and sewer. Uh, Trail Ridge Drive from Lake Country Drive to the cul-de-sac is water. Uh, Lake Highlands Court from Lake Country Drive to the Cold Sack, we're doing water and sewer there. Uh, and then on uh, Plaza Ridge Court from Lake Country Drive to the Cold Sack, we also are doing water and sewer. And then on the Regents Court uh, Cul de Sac, we'll be doing water and sewer. And then on the Heatherwood Court, the only thing we are replacing there is sanitary sewer. So now a question that's gonna come up and particularly for those individuals that live on cul-de-sacs. Uh, we will have your water turned off for about 15 to 30 minutes when we transfer the existing service line to a temporary water line and we will have a temporary water line in place while we're doing uh, replacing the old line. And then uh, we will uh, shut it down again when the contractor is has, done all his testing, back teeing, and all of that on the new water line, then we will put the service back 
uh, we will put your service back to the new line. And these are switchovers are done during the day, and you will be notified uh, by the contractor. Send us down here a little below. He'll knock on your door and let you know when your water's going to be turned on and off. He also may put hangers. Uh, if it, nobody answers the door, he may put door hangers out so that you can, you know, uh, doubling in keeping that information going. And it generally takes about 30 minutes per house uh, to do the transfer service, and they're done one at a time. So now the next question that comes up quite a bit, how does the temporary line impact my home and, uh, and water bill? Well, uh, temporary water line ensures that you're not without water during the construction period. Uh, in the summer months, uh, the continuous flow keeps the water from becoming stagnant in the above ground line, and that's important as we know. During the winter months, water must continually flow through the temporary line to keep the line from freezing. So we ask that any customers that have is on this temporary line that in the winter months as it gets colder, uh, that they allow their faucets to drip. Now, the bill for your water usage while you're on the temporary line is based on an average of the previous month's use. So it's not your meter, we're basically disconnected from the meter or your, your service is disconnected from the meter. So uh, our utility billing group will base that on average of previous months will be, and it'll be an average bill. So, Will we need access to your property? The construction that we are performing will be done in the streets and easements. If Fort Worth Water needs access to your property, we will contact you. If an easement is needed for your property, a city land agent will be contacting you soon. Based on where we, the level we're at in design, we do not believe we need any new easements for this project. So, uh, so that one will not be uh, uh, that. Hopefully, we will not run into that during construction or prior to opening bids that we have to get an easement, but we believe we're working totally within existing easements or straight right away. Will sewer service be disrupted? No, your sanitary sewers will not be interrupted. Uh, new sewer cleanouts will be installed at the property line. Uh, when we replace the sewer line, we, we put in new service lines and we will put a clean out right at the property line. Uh, and the reason that we have put the sewer clean out at the property line, it provides crews easy access if a backup or blockage occurs. So we have the ability to get there much more quickly or, or start working on the sewer line. Now, will I have access to my driveway during construction? Um, we will have an inspector assigned to this project. Um, and when we're ready to start construction, the inspector and the contractor will work with the residents who need driveway access during active construction hours. And yes, since we are working in the street and we have driveways that come right out onto the street or onto the cul-de-sac, there could be times that when, if their excavation works being done, the driveway might be blocked. Uh, but we, we only want to do that during construction hours. And at the end of the day, we want to make sure we leave access to the driveways when the contractor completes his work each day. And that will be a point of discussion with the contractor in the pre-construction meeting. So how, how, are you, how am I gonna coordinate traffic uh, during construction? Well, uh, you see there, one of the things that we always worry about is, are we gonna impact schools or churches or public facilities? Uh, we, will have, we, we will have a control plan in place before the contractor starts work. Uh, that is an item that we are still working on uh, because uh, the next item is we're still working with the Eagle Mountain Independent School District concerning bus routes. Uh, if, if they have a bus route, that will have some impact on our construction uh, times as we want to make sure we leave as much access as possible. And then also where, if they're using buses, where, do the, where are the students picked up by that bus? Is it... Are they at one location, two locations, three locations? So we will have a meeting uh, with the school district to assure or get, if they have a bus route there, that we address that in our uh, specifications and, and therefore keep the contractor informed as to what we may have to do handling traffic flow. 
Now, the next item I think that always becomes important on some of these projects is, will the city's trash truck be able to pick up my trash and recycling during construction? So if we have closed part of the street and your trash is on that side of the street that's closed, the contractor is responsible to take your trash container, put it on the other side of the street, uh, both your recycle and your normal trash and to assure that it's picked up on the, on the day that it's picked up. And uh, that is again, another items that are put in uh, the contractor will be in our uh, details and then also will be also in our uh, specifications that they're responsible for making sure uh, of that. Will there be lane closures during construction? Yes, I can almost assure you that there'll be signs out there. Now it may not be a full width of the street closure. And of course, if we did that, we would have to put up detours. However, a lot of these will be because I know where the water line is uh, going down Lake Country, you know, we'll probably have part of that blocked off while they're doing the work. Now, again, we will work with a, a contractor to minimize that the amount of road that they need to take. Uh, same thing will go with the sanitary sewer when we're replacing it there. Now, uh, cul-de-sacs, again, we will, you know, we still need to leave access to uh, driveways as, as much as possible, except for when there might be some periods when we actually have to, we have the driveway blocked. But again, at the end of the day, we should have every driveway back open and the, and the cul-de-sac would be back open. And the street may be open partially. Again, if we've got an open trench or anything like that, which we generally don't like to have at the end of the day, we'll have that barricaded off. So uh, you still may see some uh, lane closed signs or, or traffic control signs up even uh, after the construction is done for the day. So that leads me to the next one. What are our construction hours? Uh, City of Fort Worth's requirements are 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday through Friday. Uh, we have a little different criteria if we have a school zone, an active school zone. Uh, uh, times are a little different, but that's Monday through Friday. And if the contractor requests to work on Saturdays, and that's he cannot work on Sundays, uh, it's usually either 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. or 5 p.m. on Saturdays. And a lot of times that becomes a discussion between our inspector and the uh, contractor as to what they're going to be doing and how much impact it might have uh, for traffic, particularly on Saturdays. So the timeline, well, as stated, since we call in the design, the project's still in the design phase. Uh, we expect to design, uh, finalize the design, advertise for bids and select a contractor during late summer or early fall of 2023. So I anticipate a large portion of this construction will occur in the fall uh, time period. Uh, we haven't talked about the number of days yet on this project, but I would, you know, it, it may take some time because of the amount of cul-de-sac work we have to do, water line replacing and things like that. Uh, but we'll have a much better idea uh, as we get closer and finish our, uh, get our final plans ready for bidding. If at, at the point when we've got the contract awarded and we get a contractor on board, we will have another uh, community meeting, the community construction meeting, um, and uh, we'll do that before the construction starts. And at that meeting, you'll have uh, both uh, the city staff, uh, our design engineer, and we will have the contractor also participate in that uh, as he can answer some of the questions of how he's going to approach uh, these items, the various items that we have to deal with. So now, where can you get more information? Well, first place is go to www.fortworthtexas.gov and type the project number. And the project number for this project is 103418. And if you put that in the search bar, it will go right to the construction project page, which is the Lake Country Drive Water and Sewer Improvements. And it should come right up. Um, if you want to get project page updates, uh, scroll, there's a, place you know, on that screen that you're on, you can scroll down to the bottom of the project page and subscribe on this page. So anytime a notice is posted or anything gets uh, 
update is made, it will uh, be it will be added to uh, that site, and it should pop up. Um, and then uh, there will be a PDF of the PowerPoint we're making right now, and then there will be a PDF of the uh, construction. And then you can link this to a YouTube video, uh, which will also be posted on the project page. So now I th oh, this is a question that uh, I think is good, even uh, if, if if nothing happens during our construction, but is numbers to call in emergency. So if you have a sewer backup or you see a water main break or, you know, leaks, uh, we do have a 24 hour a day response group. Uh, their number is, is, is the same. It's same in two cases, but, uh, you select option one, it goes directly to who's on call that night. It's 817-392-4477 and select option one. And that, that is for main breaks and things like that. Now we had the water call center is for non-emergencies and it's, uh, staff from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday. Again, it has the same number, but if you just let it ring, it will, you'll get the options. If you don't select option one, it will roll over to the, uh, the water call center. Now we also, there's a My FW app and it's available in the app store or Google Play. And you can report sewer overflows, leaks, and water main breaks, missing lids or broken lids, water theft, if you see anybody stealing water, uh, water violations, no water service, water pressure issues, or other sewer concerns. You can actually use that app to send that information in, and it is responded to also. So again, just to uh, think, uh, my name is Scott Taylor. Uh, my phone number is 817-392-7240. Um, and I can be reached at scott.taylor at fortworthtexas.gov. And then again, if I get tied up and you ask a question I can't answer, I'll call Paul because Paul's the design guy. He, he should know what they're doing uh, and he does. Uh, and so I've worked with Paul before. Uh, so but we can get, if you have any questions anytime, and I know a lot of them will happen during construction. That's usually when I get more phone calls is during the construction period. Uh, and we, you know, again, some things happen that we're not aware of that we're gonna run into during construction. So anyway, so I thank y'all for your participation. Uh, or thank y'all for listening to me. And uh, I guess now Sally will take questions. We don't have anything in the chat, so if you have a question, jump right up. Larissa. <laughs> oh, you're on mute, Larissa. Larissa, you're muted. There okay, you go. Am I unmuted? Okay. Now um, I can hear you. Okay. How long is, is the projected timeline of this? Is it going to be like a year, six months? I mean, it seems like a really big project. Yeah, I would guess, and this is just now because one of the things we'll be discussing here in the next month or so is the number of days that we'll put in the for the bid document. I would expect, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm off the top of my head, given that we may have some starts and stops as we're doing, you know, cul-de-sac here, I would say 210 to probably... 290 days so we're mm -hmm. looking basically probably nine month nine month frame and again i may be optimistic on that uh, mm -hmm. is, uh because there's been issues that we've had recently that are not affecting construction it's getting material delivered okay. for the project like valves and water line and sewer line um and manholes we've had some issues on other projects on delivery time but i would say i would say nine months would be the target date but you know again that's just a guess right now we want to minute we want to minimize the time we're there i mean we clearly want to get in and out but uh mm -hmm. um it just it's sometimes just a big project. It, yes it's it's and it is a it's a large project um you know, for a neighborhood. I mean, that's a, there's a lot of us, a lot of things to do. And we're going to be on, basically, we're going to have one main street 
uh, there's going to be construction going on it almost the entire length. So, okay. Does anybody mind if I ask one more? Go ahead. No, no? okay. Um, it, it on the on the notice that we got, it shows that it's traveling towards uh, Golf Club Drive and Prentice. And yes. when you guys were talking about space, you were showing the schools, which are, you know, a mile in the other direction. Or half a mile in the other direction. I can't remember which. Yeah. So are, are you actually going to be past? Because, I mean, my cul-de-sac is the starting point or the finishing point, And you showed it going the other direction. So do we only have a partial map showing? Or is it going to go up towards the schools? No, no, okay. no. The, 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 the line shown on the drawing is correct. They took a picture of the school more as an example of things that we have to worry about traffic impacts, okay. like using Lake Country Drive as that for impact. But no, we, we're not okay. going that far. We're not going that direction. Uh, um, yeah, but, but, but yeah, we're going the other direction. So we're basically just working along that, but no, the school, we're not going towards the school. Okay. Would you have two questions from Jeff and Cherie? Did you want to, I can, I can tell it to him if you want me to. Are you unmuted? Sorry. Hang on a second. Okay, <laughs> the questions in chat are, I missed the start date. Can you go back to the timeline, um, <coughs> Scott? Sorry. Yep, you missed it. Yeah, so the, the timeline is that we, we're expecting to finalize our design, advertise for bids and select a contractor during late summer or early fall of 2023. So going on the, since that I generally know that these projects, it takes us, evidently we we try to estimate earlier, but I think we will start this sometime in the fall of 2023, which means that we would actually roll over if we went the nine months, which I anticipate, uh, you know, we're gonna roll into uh, 2024 in the winter and may, hopefully winter and spring, we'd be done by the end of spring in 2024. Now that, and that's the timeline today. And again, that's subject to change. Uh, and uh, w when we get, when we have the construction uh, neighbor, uh, neighborhood meeting, we'll be, we will have a definitive schedule at that point uh, because we will have the contractor will have supplied us a, a schedule so we can give you more information. Okay, Scott, I have a second question. Um, Jeff and Cherie, I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Uh, work from home and they need to be able to come and go throughout the day. Will they be able to do that during Yes, they will. And again, one of the things we will do is we will work with the city inspector and the contractor for access. Uh, and I, there may be a period, I, you know, I can't imagine, you know, how long it would be, but if there's a period, like if it's a water service we're installing or something like that, but we will, we also will maintain traffic open. We do not plan to close any street, particularly Lake Country Drive, uh, because it's a major. So we will, we will have traffic signs up and, and we may have lanes blocked, but we don't anticipate, we will work with each of the homeowners to assure that we minimize any disruption uh, to their house or to their driveways. Okay, and Randy, you said you have a quick question? Yeah, I have a quick one. So I'm Randy Ball, and I'm in the Glen Eagle subdivision. And in the emails that I've been getting, you've been specifically calling out Glen Eagles, but you don't really come into our neighborhood. You're really close. We're down by the corner of Golf Club and Lake Country. But I don't see that you're coming into our neighborhood. No, so no I don't think we are, them? but but we also notify the surrounding areas because okay. if people come up and use Lake Country Drive uh, a lot, we just want to make sure everybody's aware there's construction there, and we and we actually will put a construction sign at the roughly at the ends of each project. That gets very difficult to do, but we will, you know, we'll have the contractor define where the construction area is. But that that's the reason it was is mentioned is we just want to make sure the surround not not only the people that are going to be directly impacted, but other people that use those streets are, are aware of the construction. 
Okay, in these 15 to 30 minute outages you were talking about each house might have, that's not going to impact us. No, not at all. Okay. No, because right. the outage is the outage will be at their individual meter, uh, okay. not not the whole system. I can elaborate okay. on what um, Scott was saying. I know where I live. Um, there's there's more than one way out, but people have there's certain route they want out of the neighborhood. So we always want to make sure that we're letting everybody know in the vicinity of it that there's going to be construction and there may be some some street closures. So that's why we always kind of over notify people. Um, all right, Chris, um, you asked, are they also going to replace the road surface? That is uh, the one item that we have not completed yet. And in fact, uh, I've had a discussion with my supervisor uh, yesterday. And when he comes back, uh, we will, you will probably see people that live along Lake Country Drive. You'll probably see a vehicle out there that will be taking as taking samples of the road surface uh, so we can determine the level of road paving that we might have to do uh, after we've completed all the utility work so i don't have an answer for that yet but there is a there's probably a good possibility we will be doing some paving work in that area i just don't know how, i can't define the the scope of that just yet Okay, that's all we have in the chat. Um, do y'all have some more questions for Scott? Yes, I do. Okay, Fred. Uh, this, go this is yeah, this is Fred Villarreal. I live in um, Sunset Cove, so it's at the, at the bottom of the hill. Um, I walk the the loop around Golf Club and uh, Lake Country pretty much every morning. I notice water coming up through the pavement on Lake Country as well as Golf Club. Um, generally. Is the sewer and water lines down the middle of the uh, road? It's basically four lanes wide. Are you yeah. going to take out the full four lanes, or are you just talking about the equivalent no. one lane thereabouts? In, in actuality, based on the record or the GIS system, most of those lines are out of the drive lanes. I mean, I and I drove okay. when I drive through there. I was going. That's a four lane road. Right. But they're on the outside where the white stripe is, so the sewer and water appear not to be in the travel lanes. Now, uh, again, and that's just based on GIS system, and I think Paul's guys did a lot of surveying, so they really think it's on the sides, and if we did that, we probably would not have to close uh, the whole street. Because uh, okay. we, sh we still should have ability to get people to pass, even if we have to rearrange uh, some of the traffic flow there. But 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 right now, I don't anticipate that we should have any full street closures unless there's the other. The only provision I will put on that is if it's determined that we need to do a street reconstruction on that, and then that changes a little bit. But right now, I'm, I'm only interested in looking what's what's over our sewer and water line, but it's on the sides. It is, it is closer to the curb. Okay, now that's good to go and know. And then there are some residents that park their vehicles overnight. On yes. Those side lanes, they'll have to deal with, okay. Yeah, they, that, yeah, and, and, we'll, and they may have, you know, you may see uh, orange barricade or bar maybe barricades and cones out uh, in some areas uh, at, the, at night. But uh, that's, uh, you know, I, and I appreciate that question because that, that's one that, I have, we have been discussing a little bit is how much of the street work are we going to really have to do on this project? Okay, I have another question. Um, being at the bottom of the hill, <laughs> everything slides downhill, and we have a lift station right there at uh, Sunset Cove. Mm -hmm. I was, um, I, I've lived there since the lift station was uh, replaced. Um, of course, I've got some things about the lift station, but I seem to remember there were some sewage spills that occurred during the replacement of that lift station, ended up in uh, Eagle Mountain Lake. Will there be provisions to deal with um, uh, sewage spills during construction to keep sewage out of the lake? Yes, yes, we will. We will. We have. We will have language if we don't already have it in some of our standard. Uh, phrases, but we we will require the contractor uh, to avoid 
spilling sewage, shall we say? Um, yeah. And it mm -hmm. and it may include him having to build a, a dike or something like that. I don't. We don't anticipate that we're going to have that issue. Hopefully. Uh, because we're still discussing there's means and methods of the construction itself. Um, and uh, hopefully we can avoid the, the only thing that we would might have to do is some bypass pumping uh, and we would go manhole to manhole with that um, and hopefully avoid any, you know, sewage escaping the area and getting into the lake. But uh, that is something that we pay close attention to. Uh, no, I appreciate it. Nobody plans to have a spill. Yeah, no, no. It's more of what do you do to mitigate it? <laughs> yeah, and, and and usually it's get a bunch of dirt out there in a hurry, <laughs> to, and then start working on the repair. Uh, is to put it, build the dam, and then take care of it from there. But uh, again, this will be uh, information that we will discuss with our contractor when we get him on board. Uh, is some of the items that he needs to be uh, aware of. That have occurred out there previously. Sure, and I believe, based on the scope that's defined uh, in this presentation, you are not touching the lift station. No, you're only no, tying into the station. Yes, we're we're, yeah, all we're doing is replacing a line and tying into the lift station itself. So we're not uh, we're not working on the lift station itself. Okay, thank you. Okay, Larissa, did you want to bring up your question oh. about groundwater? Uh, it, no, it was, I was trying to answer someone else's about the street. Cause I have groundwater that comes out of the street in front of my house as well. And I had the water department come out and test it to make sure it wasn't city water. And it wasn't, we've got a big problem with that. Um, no, my question was more actually it's twofold. One, um, I own the lot adjacent to my home and it's just a treed lot and there's a fire hydrant on the corner. Um, they tap into it. I watched people do it yesterday to fill up trucks um, for the construction across the street from me. Um, so will they be affecting the fire hydrant on the corner of my property? If so, what will that entail? And two, if you're going to be running through the winter months, having water piped across the ground when we have problems with freezing water. How are we going to keep that? I mean, that's really, you know, it's bad enough you're dripping your faucets because it's 19 degrees outside. If it's 19 degrees outside and your water is above ground rather than underground, what happens if we of freezes in our lines because of it because it's going to make the water all that much colder coming to the house well so what if it cracks a line well that that we we address a lot of the reason my comment was we want to keep the water flowing through the pipe because flowing yeah. water it it has to get very cold to freeze moving mm -hmm. water and if we have to we can come up with some other options of how to handle that uh anything we can do to keep and maybe and i know it's been done before we've actually buried temporary water line uh, mm -hmm. but that tears up more street and uh, possibly try and still we're trying to minimize yard tear but we that's something we'll discuss with the contractor uh and also it may be that we point out those that are like that the temporary services ones where we have to have temporary services you address those first uh, whereas the main water line in the street, uh, you know, it flows, you know, it's bigger diameter, uh, it's deeper, you know, it's already got some freeze protection that way. So there's some options there to, if we get into the cold months, uh, that we may, the, the cul-de-sacs may get done before the main line gets done just to address okay. some of those potential concerns of freezing. Okay. And what about the fire hydrant? The fire hydrant, uh, the contractor may use the fire hydrant to fill his water trucks up with, but. Yeah, no, not that. I worry. I wondered if it was going to be really piped. Like, are you going to be messing with the fire hydrant along with the lines for regular water? Is it all tied in? Is it tied in? Yes. The Well, the same water that you, the same lines you get your water from go to that mm -hmm. fire hydrant. Uh, so they'll be shutting it off and on as well. But uh, well, again, or digging might, up around it. They may dig up around it, uh, and we have to we have to reconnect the fire hydrant. Uh, 
We also need to check that fire hydrant. I don't know its age. Uh, sometimes we replace the fire hydrant, but again, that would be done in non winter months or okay. in a, a non freezing environment, but there's potential uh, that that fire hydrant, we will have to run new line to the fire hydrant. Okay, that was my question. I didn't yeah. care who used it. Just the fact yeah, that no, it no. is a working fire hydrant it, and it, will it there will be there dis- will be a there will be a period in which a short period while they tie that fire hydrant back in uh, to okay. the new line. It'll be a, right. it'll be out of service. Okay. Okay, we've got <clears throat> we've got a actually a statement from Jeff and Cherie. They say they have two underground springs on their property, and is runoff going to be a problem? Uh, Jeff, did you want to talk about it? I Jeff guess my Cherie? question. Hey, hello, hold on. There you go. <laughs> are you are you there? Yeah, yes. 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 Okay, sorry. yes. We've got a son in the background that makes a lot of noise, so that's why we've been so, muted. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. Okay. So I know that the underground springs are not tied into the water stuff. I know that. Right. But um, so it did kind of worry me though, because we do get pretty flooded. So is there going to be a time where these pipes will be, for some reason, I don't know. Is there going to be any runoff from all this stuff? No. No, the only runoff you should see from this project will be rainfall. Uh, the contractor's responsible basically every day. Uh, he's required to cover everything that he's excavated in that day. Um, and, uh, you know, the only thing I could see would be a catastrophic failure of a water line and it starts spraying, uh, which I don't think will happen. But no, we, we at the end of the day, he needs to button up his uh, trench and I, unless we get some leaks, I don't expect any runoff from the construction. Okay, and they'll let us know if they're gonna be tearing up our yard. Uh, yes, if they need to get in your yard, you will again, uh, our city inspector and the contractor will contact everybody uh, and if they're gonna get in the yard, they're required to do that. Cause y'all, y'all may be the, well, maybe the same company or not, I don't know, but we had people drilling holes looking at the pipes probably last fall and they came off close to a very important tree in our yard. Well, I, I, I don't know anything about that, I, I, that's, uh, but no, uh, we won't be, I, we should not be doing any drilling. We should have a backhoe that is working on a water line that's in either the street or in an easement. And okay. That's the, that, and that's their area, confined area of work. Okay, uh, I've seen that happen before. Yeah, I get that. So, and and no, uh, we certainly will not get in your yard. Uh, the only thing we might ever have to get in the yard is if we have to when we uh, put in a new service line. That's the only thing, and that's and that's nothing. That's a two inch line or a four inch line. Right, right. We're at. So, so no, we should not be around drilling around your trees or anything like that, or working around trees, particularly on your property. Now, will this ever? Uh, uh, sorry, one more question. I think, <laughs> will this ever? Um, compromise the uh, what's the word the water quality pressure well, I'm not talking pressure I'm just talking, talking about the quality, quality of your springs I ca- no. I'm, no I'm talking about yeah. quality of water out of the tap is this going to no. compromise any of that no no it will not in fact okay. uh, we, we're required and you will this is another thing that we haven't covered and we'll talk more about this probably in the construction is they're required to flush and then disinfect and flush and then pull a sample to make sure it meets the state of Texas requirements for drinking water. Okay. So, Cause I know we so, had some work done on the main line there in our yard. So we had to pay for it, which is fine, but um, they got a lot of dirt in it. And it clogged up our sinks and new yeah. bath, brand new bathroom remodel, and it clogged yeah. up everything. No, ma'am. We we uh, they before they actually tie your new service in, they have to make sure that that water is meets all the city and state criteria. Okay. Okay. So, 
and that requires them to flush. So you may see some dirty water running down the street, yeah, but yeah. that's being flushed out of the system before okay. we go back and start hooking up services. Okay. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay. We've got a question from Jane. She said, um, so this isn't a four lane road. It's a two lane road with a bike lane. So she wants to know if it's going to affect the bike lane. That's a good question. <laughs> well, I, I will tell you that if it is, and there's one area, well, there's areas where the water line is and some where the sewer line is, that that lane will probably be impacted uh, from bikes just because of where the water line is and where the sewer line is. Uh, it is actually over in that area uh, based on what I've seen uh, in my going out to the project site. So yes, there is an impact that some of the bicycle lanes will be impacted. Okay, I oh wait, just a second. We got another question. All right. Let's the notation for the planning. Um, the Trail Ridge Court cul-de-sac. Okay. You hit a spring water within a few feet of the digging. Oh, it's yeah. immediate. The water, the water over okay. here is you dig and water flows in from the sides of the hole when you get about two feet down. Okay. Contractor will have to handle that flow. And pump it out. And pump it out. Yes. It'll have to have to yeah. Pump yeah. It out. Yeah. He, they will, they will have to deal if, and if that means they have to put a pump, dig a hole and put a pump in to pump water out while mm -hmm. they're, uh, re, while they're installing a water line, that's what they'll have to do. And that's something we'll also we will talk about. We can talk about that. Our pre-construction. I appreciate you. This is about the cooktop. I want to ask him about that. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I missed someone's question. Just, oh, Chris wants to know how deep the water and sewer lines are. Uh, I'd say the water line is probably three to four feet deep, maybe a little deeper. The sewer line, the depth varies since it's a gravity line. It gets deeper as it approaches that lift station. Uh, and it could be as much as nine to 10 feet deep, maybe even 12 foot deep. Uh, so again, wow. uh, well, again, there will be trench safety requirements. And so it'll probably be you probably see some boxes and things like that from a trench safety standpoint, but yes, um, we try the water line is should be I'd say three to four feet deep or that much cover over it, but the sewer line is deeper because it is falling. It's going that direction towards that lift station. Okay, uh, we say again what we're doing with the lift station. We're doing uh, nothing with the lift station. We have a pipe that we're replacing outside of the lift station with a larger diameter pipe and tying it back into a pipe that's coming from the lift station. Okay. We are not, we are not working on the lift station itself. Okay. All right. Those are all the questions in the chat, oh, Larissa. <laughs> oh yeah. I have one more. It came to mind. And now that it's my turn, it's going away. Where was it? Um, oh, dag nabbit. Oh, uh, <laughs> sewers, lift stations. It was, oh, um, being on the end or the beginning, um, will, when the project is going on, will they complete a section and move on? Or will it be, will the cul de sac be tore up from start to finish and they fix it all at the same time at the end? Okay. So that's, that's a good question because, uh, I will tell you how I normally would guess the contractor would do this is that he will go cul-de-sac by cul-de-sac, place the water line, do the services. He will then temporary backfill everything because mm -hmm. he's going to have a separate contractor come in and do the asphalt work. And mm -hmm. it's easier if they do those all at the same time, uh, all at once. So we may have cul-de-sacs that need to be paved that are done. And then he's going to bring his asphalt contractor in to do that or 
and I'm guessing it's asphalt. So, uh, but they but, do the work, they replace the pipe, they take away the temporary one, and yes. they move on. Yes, they move on, and and okay. that'll be the, and then they'll bring. They have two. Basically, it's they'll have two or three crews. One is the water guy, one's the sewer guy, and one's the paving guy. And the paving guy is usually the last guy on the project. Mm -hmm. Now that okay. that could be changed because you know we discussed that and maybe they want to come in and pave, they want to finish with the cul-de-sac and they come in and do that cul-de-sac when it's done and then wait for the next one. I don't know. That gets also into the means and methods of the con with the contractor. Yeah, I was more worried about the the temporary water lines no, being no, exposed that, for nine months. No, the temporary water line. Once the new water line's in, it passes back T. We're tying your new services in. And they go on. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. Yep. And well, actually, the lot adjacent to me that I own has a meter on it, <laughs> but no home. So I assume that they'll also take care of that meter, even though if there's a that, if there's, actually, a, there's I don't think there's anything in that box now that I think so about if, it. So if there's a box. if there was a service line going to that meter box, they would replace that service line. But and if, if there's, there's nothing in if it, there's nothing in it, they will not put the meter in. They will not. We won't. won't nothing won't do will be anything. done. No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. No, nope, that's it for me. You guys had some great questions. Yes, you did. <laughs> I think that's the best meeting we've had in a long time. Okay. It's all scary. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Sally, it beat the one in which we sat there for five minutes and nobody showed up and no questions. Oh, That's my true. goodness. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Scott, can you go back to the page that shows um, page 18? Oh, okay. Thank you. Where it's got Glad the, you got that number. Yes, that right there yeah. where yeah. I can get so more information. It, um, Shows you where the how to type it in. It'll probably still show the meeting, um, so you want to click on the one that just says project page. Um, and remember, if you scroll all the way out, all the way down to the bottom of the page, you can click on subscribe to this page. Now, someone asked me yesterday because I was updating the pages, and they said, "Well, can't you tell us what you updated?" Our, our web provider doesn't do that. It just tells you there is an update, so you kind of have to look at it and go, "Well." Did they change the timeline? Did they change the status? Did they, but it, it doesn't tell you what was changed. It just tells you the page was updated. So okay. our best way um, for information. Yes. Um, if you can, this is Thursday. We should have the video. Um, we, we turn this WebEx presentation into a YouTube video. We should have that up by Monday. Um, and I should be able to get the, a PDF of this PowerPoint up there by tomorrow. Thanks, Sally. I'll show my kids what I actually do for a living. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank y'all. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.